like to hear about the sickness. The, it's, uh, but uh, uh, I think it says in the Bible that our days are numbered and and uh, they're not all good days. I forget exactly what it says, but uh, I just stand by sick. But today's lesson is on the uh, Good Samaritan. Jesus gives it an example in uh, Luke 10 and uh, 25 through 37. I, I'd like to read that first. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him. I think this lawyer was a religious man. Uh, they just said lawyer, but uh, I think he, uh, he knew the law. He probably memorized it, and uh, he was going to trick the Lord. And uh, But he, he just being a man, but uh, there's... Uh, and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, saying, Who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there come down a certain priest that certain priest that way, and when he saw him he passed by on the other side. <clears throat> and likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan as he journeyed came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and, and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. And verse 36, uh, Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him, then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Uh, but uh, this lawyer was trying to uh, trick Jesus. I don't think he was interested in doing the right thing. He, he, was, he was just uh, wanting to uh, trip Jesus up. But as uh, I've seen on different stories, people say, Do you know who I am? You know. Jesus being God in the flesh, that uh, this guy didn't know who, who Jesus was. But uh, but the parable of the Good Samaritan, uh, I don't know where it's the most famous parable, but it, it's used a lot uh, nowadays. Uh, I even heard it on TV the other day about somebody saying the Good Samaritan. So. And uh, the term... Good Samaritan has become synonymous with someone who shows mercy. It's a positive name. 
Even many organizations use it to show how they care for people. But uh, back then, uh, Good Samaritan meaning uh, uh, was different. That uh, it was much different in the first century. But those who first heard the Good Samaritan story would not have held such a positive outlook. To the Jews, the Samaritan was anything but good. The problem we face when we read this story is how we today do the Good Samaritan meaning, and that causes us to miss the significance of what Jesus had, had done. Uh, but Jesus displays his, you know, the, his genius, and, and he dodges the traps, and uh, he answered this guy's question with another question. You know, how great is thou? And, uh, but it's a passage that we, we need to lean on today. Uh, and, uh, but the Good Samaritan starts off with a lawyer, religious leader, testing Jesus by asking him a question. What must I do to inherit eternal life. We know his motives. It wasn't about uh, uh, doing right. It was about trying to trick somebody so that uh, he... Uh, but he's not interested in the question. He just wants to test our Lord. But uh, I guess you could say this guy knows the law. He probably memorized the law and he kind of familiar with the law. And he knows that this is not an easy question and again he's not asking because he's interested in the answer. He's asking because he wants to trick Jesus up and he asked a question that uh, might be hard for uh, other people to answer. But Jesus is pretty smart, and how he responds is brilliant. Rather than answer this trick question, Jesus asked another question. Luke 10, 26. He, he knows that this guy would rather talk than listen. So Jesus throws the question back at him. What do you think? And here's the thing. This uh, lawyer answered correctly. Luke, 20, Luke 10, 27, and 28, he gets it right. Jesus even tells him he answers right. But uh, Jesus tells him it's not okay to just know it. Uh, you uh, have to actually live it. The lawyer is sharp and he sees what Jesus just did. Jesus called him out on not living up to what he believes. Now he's faced with how to respond. He can either repent and fix his ways or try to justify his actions, but he, he chooses to justify his actions. And And, uh, it's, uh, and who is my lawyer? That's the lawyer asked. Uh, or who is my neighbor? That's Luke 10 and 29. Realizing he can't actually live out the law perfectly. There was only one that done that, and he's talking to the, to the man that lived the law without sin. He searches for the loophole. He's trying to justify himself. He's not interested in following Jesus. He just wants the rewards. He doesn't want to know who his neighbor is. Rather, who, who his neighbor is. That he, that way he can narrow the field so he can claim that he is fulfilling the law. But before we go criticizing this guy, we ourselves need to look in the mirror to do we the same thing? We look for the loophole so that we can do what we want to do and still get the rewards. He was also following common 
teaching of the day, the uh, literature of the day made a clear distinction that your neighbor was only to include Israelites. What Jesus is about to expand of who his neighbor is, far beyond where this lawyer or any Jew would be comfortable. The Samaritans were looked down upon. They, they were uh, more or less looked as uh, half-breeds or not uh, not Jews. They, uh, a lot of times, uh, countries come in and, and uh, take Israel and they split them and, and they would uh, have them, uh, you know, take them to their country and some of them intermarried with other people. And I think that's where some of the Samaritans come from. They, uh, they were split up and, but uh, even the woman at the well, she, uh, she asked Jesus why he was talking to her. She was a Samaritan, I think. I think she uh, she wondered, she said, you all, uh, Jews don't even talk to us. So. But the, the parable of the Good Samaritan is a response to both questions the lawyer asked. Jesus didn't just address his justify, justifying question, who is my neighbor, but also his first, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Based off these two questions, Jesus launches into his parable. The, uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan. But the details, uh, I don't know if this really happened, but Jesus said it, so we take it for what he says, and uh, but but he starts off with a man traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. This this road was known to be dangerous. That uh, really a man shouldn't be going by himself, you know. And uh, but from the beginning, those listening would have recognized how foolish it was for this man to take that route by himself. Of course, uh, on his way, he gets beat up and robbed and and uh, left for dead. I, I'd say the lawyer was thinking, well, this guy got what was coming to him. But this isn't a story of the consequences of foolish decision. That was not what Jesus was getting at. But the traveler is badly beaten and barely hanging into life when a priest comes across him, Luke 10 and 31. But the initial hope is soon dissipated. The priest doesn't help. Not, not only does he not help, Jesus makes clear that he went out of his way to pass by on the other side of this half-dead traveler. He wants nothing to do with it. Next to Levi, comes by, comes by the blood of traveler, Luke 10 and 32. Surely he will stop and help, right? No, he too passes by on the other side. I, I was just wondering, uh, you know, where is the love? These uh, Levites were, uh, were the only ones that uh, the priests come out of the Levites. And, uh, they were the only ones that could carry the Ark of the Covenant, and they, they carried the, uh, the tabernacle or the tent where they worshiped. They carried uh, the poles and all the equipment. They were the only ones allowed to do that. And uh, But uh, they didn't receive an inheritance when they went into the land of Canaan. Uh, God said, uh, you, uh, I, "I'm your inheritance." That they were, uh, they were different from the other tribes. Uh, God put this on the, uh, but the priest could only come from the lineage of Aaron. Uh, everybody, the Levites, couldn't be a priest. But uh, I was thinking about 
about love too. It says uh, love is it, it, mentioned 310 times in the, in the Bible, 131 in the Old Testament, and 179 in the New Testament. But in Matthew 5 and 43, uh, it reads, "You have heard that it hath been said, You shall love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy." That, that was Jesus speaking. In Matthew 5 and 44, But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them that, pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. And, uh, John 14 and 15, Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commandments. Now these, uh, these Levites uh, had a different thing. They, they were thinking about themselves. And, uh, but uh, to really understand what is going on in Jesus' story, we need to understand the customs of the day. Both of these two men are clergymen. The priest's job was to officiate temple sacrifices, and Levites helped maintain the temple and its services. Both of these jobs required them to remain ceremonially clean while on duty. There was a list of things they couldn't do, one of them being touching a dead body or or any bodily fluid. But, uh, but in essence, these religious leaders were placing their adherence to the rules over the needs of the people. They missed the point. These religious leaders were more concerned with their outward appearance of cleanliness than the actual condition of their hearts. But uh, this isn't the only time Jesus makes this point. He criticized the Pharisees for only cleaning the outside of the cup, but neglecting the inside. That's Matthew 23 and verse 25. And also Luke 11 and 39. Jesus is getting at the same point here. It's where your heart is that matters. And for these characters in the story, it was in the wrong place. But I'd say that that lawyer uh, was thinking, you know, he was probably seeing himself in the story. He probably would have done the same thing that these uh, Levites, that the priest and the Levite did, but Jesus isn't done. It's about to get worse. Uh, the unsuspecting hero is a Samaritan, Luke 10 and 33. So nowadays, when, when we see the word Samaritan, we think of something good. The good Samaritan would have been an oxymoron to the lawyer and the Jews of the day. The Samaritans were hated by the Jews and were seen as half-breeds. There was an intense rivalry that often turned violent. In the lawyer's eyes, these, these Samaritans could uh, do nothing right. But uh, Jesus, in, in uh, this parable, it's the uh, religious leaders that are doing wrong. Jesus doesn't just stop with the Samaritan just checking on the guy. He goes above and beyond. Luke 10 and verse 34 and 35. The good Samaritan not only has compassion, but his compassion moves to action. He cleans and binds up his wounds brings him to an end, cared for him, and paid for his stay. At a great cost, 
to himself being sure this man was cared for. I think he gave him uh, uh, two denarii. I think one denarii was a day's wages, so uh, he gave him enough for two days. But he told him when he come back, he would repay him for uh, anything above that that uh, the innkeeper had, had done. And uh, but the Samaritan was was hated by the religious leaders as was Jesus. He rescued the person that needed him the most as did Jesus on the cross and he did all this out of love for some someone that could never repay him as Jesus did. The, the parable ends with that but, but still Jesus isn't quite done. The a aftermath of Remember, this story was brought on by two questions, and Jesus is now circling back to them. The lawyer's question of what my, must I do to inherit eternal life, and who is my neighbor, show that he was focused on the wrong thing. He was co concerned with correct theology, but Jesus shows that knowing the right answer is insufficient. All the correct Bible knowledge won't do us any good if it doesn't lead to a life transformation. Jesus knew that this lawyer was asking uh, the wrong question. The question isn't, who is my neighbor or what's the next thing to believe? Instead, he should be asking, how can I be a good neighbor? And how can I live out my beliefs? To drive this point home, Jesus poses a question to the lawyer. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell in the hands of the robbers? That's Luke 10 and 36. The lawyer can't even say the name. He won't even say the name Samaritan, so... But he, he said that it was the one who had mercy on him. Luke 10 and 37. He can't bring himself to admit that the good Samaritan was a better neighbor than he. he. But he can't ignore the obvious message of the parable. He knows what he must do. Now he has to wrestle with if he will actually live that way. But uh, it's easy to read, read this and look down on the lawyer, but this story should, could be used, should be used as a mirror to examine ourselves. Am I more like the lawyer or good Samaritan? Am I being a good neighbor? It, it's easy to quickly answer that question, but Jesus' story helps us to actually examine our lives to see for ourselves. The Good Samaritan meaning is simple. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's simple to understand, but it, it's really hard to actually live out. Uh, the, the problem is we are not very good at changing our own heart. And uh, it's... Uh, we, we need help from God above. That's why it's important for us to, to seek God and to always look above. Because he said, uh, your thoughts are not my thoughts. But uh, we need to keep our eye open uh, every day. And, and, uh, because there's a lot of people hurting in this world. And a lot of times we just don't see them. We don't, we don't recognize it. And sometimes the Lord uh, puts us in a place where we can help people. And, but, uh, but we can't let these uh, fears of not helping people. We, you know, we go to God and ask for strength to uh, help us to... Uh, talk to people and to be kind to them and to help them, to show them the, uh, the Word of God and, and uh, what it means and what it means for their, uh, their life and uh, about uh, their uh, soul, their eternal soul. 
patients, and uh, but uh, we uh, we come to close of the service, but uh, we always have the invitation song, which is 361, and if anybody has a need that needs to be added to to uh, the church, to uh, to hear, believe, confess. And be baptized for the remission of sins and to live faithfully until the end or those that are uh, in the church but have slipped away that have fallen away that want to be uh, reinstated back to, uh, but if anybody has a need to come forward and we'll help in uh, whatever your needs are be baptized or to be uh, to repent and to be added back to the fold. 